hey, hey, we're going to double down. It's how do we... Are we playing poker? No. Well, that's what double down means. No, double down. We're going to own two for the price of one. Huh? Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. And you're going (laughs) to explain it in just a minute, which is amazing. (laughs) Ken is... Brilliant at the whole investment side of things. I'm pretty smart too. Ryan's brilliant. Candace is very good. Linda's very good, except you heard me say two of them are brilliant. Because from the time they came out of the womb, they were thinking investment strategies. They were figuring out how to work with numbers and money. And it makes a difference. So they've been able to help not only their own families, they've been able to help hundreds of clients make really, really great investment choices and decisions and therefore build wealth actually even while people are sleeping Mm -hmm. it's kind of neat right and numbers are fun numbers are fun when they're on the right side of the balance sheet right when they are in the black yes yes and when they're green yes so (laughs) that was pretty good and so this is the inside track on real estate with the decker team and i'm yet a decker and i'm ken decker and today you're going to learn some strategies around how to make your money really work effectively for you in relation to owning a couple of properties. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So why would we want to own properties? Well, because they appreciate. They go up in value over time. Yeah. How much on average in the Ottawa market? 5%. Either side of 5% over the long haul. Sometimes it's 4, sometimes it's 6 Sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less, and yet if you average it over about a 50-year period, you're looking at about 5% year over year. 50 years? Yep. Wow. Woohoo! Did you so, start checking those stats when you were five? No. Did I just give away and- your age? Oops. <laughs> Yes, right. you did. And yet, you know what? Ken's 55 as well, so you know what? There's no, there's no um, shame in being 55. What we've been working on lately is having nothing to protect, nothing to defend, and nothing to prove. That's right. So I have nothing to prove, and yes, I'm 55, just like you are. And I get to sleep with a grandmother. And I have to sleep with a grandfather, so (laughs) I don't even know what that's all about. Anyway. It's one-upmanship. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, yeah, we'll let him win because it makes him feel good. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, can you win? You're the oldest. <laughs> Perfect. So, owning two for the price of one. Why double down? Well, because the average, if you want to be specific, is actually 4.8% year over year over an extended period of time. Mm-hmm. So, 5% is a pretty good average. I'm more of a generalist. Ken's more of a specific detail kind of guy. So, 48 if you want to have a little more accuracy. Yeah. So, most people who buy a home and live in that home for for their lifetime, like we've we've sold some homes for people that are moving into Mm. another residence or moving on to another world, another dimension or whatever we want to call it. And typically there's 400,000 or so equity in one of those small bungalows that somebody might have bought, you know, 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And paid like $20,000 for it. So there's about 380,000 that's gone up. Mm -hmm. And now that helps for retirement. If you're moving into a retirement home or something, a lot of people take their equity of the house. And I've had many people say to me, Mm. all the equity in my house is all I have for my retirement. Please be very careful with it. And I treat your home, your property, like it was my property. Or my grandma's or my mom's, depending on the age of the folks that we're helping navigate through the selling process. So it's mm-hmm. really about protecting the equity that's in a house. How, and, and you could go back and listen to lots of shows that we've done. We've done about 300 shows on real estate related topics through the inside track on real estate. And in those shows, and they're on our YouTube channel at Decker Team. Decker Team. Yeah, Decker Team YouTube channel. How hard is that? <laughs> I want to add something to the end. But no, it's, it's just, just straight, YouTube forward slash Decker team. team. There you go. Easy. And in those shows, there's lots of them that talk about how to make sure you're going to get the most money for the home that you're living in or the home that you own that is an investment property. So mm-hmm. that when you go to sell it, what are the things you can do to increase the value? 
So you can go and find that information. And if you want to get specifics in relation to your home after watching a few of those shows, then you could also call us and we'll give you an itemized list based on your specific home rather than general guidelines. So in relation to the one that we're talking about here, it's really about how do you leverage the money that you have in your home? Yeah. And before we even go there. No, I'm too early. I'd just like mm. to know why. Why? Why do it? Because you might be asking that. Why would I want to do this? Mm. Okay. Because so it sounds risky. And that's the first thing people say to me. Yes. They're kind of afraid. Are they? Well, I know lots of people are. Okay. That's at least one of the comments yeah. I get is that I'm afraid. I don't want to lose the money I already have. I don't want to mm -hmm. take equity out of my house because it's a place I live. I need to keep being able to live there. And so I don't want to borrow okay. against my right. equity. Right. And I think it's like a shell game. So if I've got a certain amount of equity in this house and I move some of it over to another house, so now I've got two houses, same amount of equity, just broken into two houses. I've got the same equity in the same real estate market. So for me, it doesn't create any fear. Right. And that's great. So information can sometimes reduce yes. that fear that feels real when you're feeling it. Yes, absolutely. And so why do it is, like I said, many times we're helping seniors sell a house that they've lived in for a long time. They've got about $400,000 in, in net cash out of it. Mm -hmm. And what if they had two of those? Because they doubled down with this advice. They had doubled down 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now they would have 800. Now, if they followed this advice and doubled down twice, mm -hmm. they would have well over a million, probably close to a million and a half dollars. Maybe more, 1.6 if you do the math. Yes. But we need maybe a little more than 25 years to pay it all off. Right. And you can do it with no more cash than what you've got already built up in your house. Now, we're going to talk about several different strategies that some of our clients have used mm -hmm. to double down. Yes. Right? And the first is save up the cash. Save up the cash for the down payment for the second house. Mm -hmm. And not take it out of your principal residence. Not build, not take equity out. That's one yeah. option. Yeah. Just save money, figure out what your latte factor is, which doesn't mean you drink coffee. It just means what are those <laughs> discretionary items that you spend money on, whether it's going out for lunch, whether it's the extra drive into town because you didn't want to pick up the groceries on the way home, so you drove back in. That was an extra $20, $25, $30 for gas because it adds up these days because then there's wear and tear on your car and all of those things. So no what kidding. discretionary in uh, expenses do you have that you could eliminate and instead save all that money and put it into an account? We've done that personally. And we have watched many of our clients do that, actually take what was what they perceived other or discretionary or miscellaneous spending that was really money that just vanished mm -hmm. until they tracked it every day. And then they saw where their money was vanishing to. They were playing magician game. Yes. Right. We, we saw an actual <clears throat> demonstration of this the other day mm. where a lady who was in a wealth building community talked about just... Just take a piece of paper, draw a line, mm. and put on one side necessary or must need or that kind of thing. And on the other side, mm -hmm. put discretionary spending. And then track your receipts for a month. And just put them in either column. I had to buy this or I didn't have to buy this. You know, so like cable, cable TV would go in the, which column? I call it discretionary. Discretionary, exactly. Someone else might say, so, though, it's a need, yeah. and they could put it on the need side. You get to decide yes. and know that some things that you would call need are really discretionary. Yeah. And the more you can put on the discretionary side and free up for monthly mm -hmm. payments towards your wealth building account, mm -hmm. I don't call it a savings account. Uh -uh. The reason being is when I was brought up by my dad, he taught me to save money to spend money. So he was great at teaching me to save money for the things I wanted. So I'd mm -hmm. save money for a new bicycle. I'd save money for my car, my first car I paid cash. When I'd you were 15. When I was 15. Like how yeah. smart was that boy? Save to spend. Yeah, save to spend. And I didn't know the save to build, save to never spend. 
right. that wealth building account. And when he says never spend, it's taking it and you are going to invest it into, in our case, what we're talking about is a house. And we've done it lots of times and it has proved to be very helpful and strategic. So as we're talking about this, it's not something we have not done ourselves. And it's also something that we've helped hundreds of other folks, clients just like you, do so that they can actually build their wealth while they're asleep. Mm -hmm. I like money yeah. I make when I'm sleeping. Yeah. Now, if you haven't accumulated enough cash to do this, you may have enough cash inside your house. So if we look at what the house is worth, what the amount of the mortgage is, you have to keep 20% equity in. But if you can take mm -hmm. out enough money by remortgaging or getting a line of credit, take that money and buy your, put your down payment on your investment property, that's leveraging your house to buy an investment property. You still have to keep minimum 20% in. In both houses. Yeah. Right. So you. Yeah. But so a lot of time people are, the equity in the, you know, they've got a six or $700,000 house. And mm -hmm. so 20% in there is more money than the 20% they need to put in in a, in a little townhouse or something. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, and we can help you with the math. Like don't, if this is a little bit intense because Ken gets kind of detail oriented. Mm -hmm. So if you're finding it a little intense, just breathe and then pick up the phone and then yeah. We'll do a one-on-one -on -one consultation. We've got some room. Yes, we have room for 10 people right now in our mm -hmm. free mentorship investing program. Now it's free and what that means is we do a free consultation. We help you find the right house. We negotiate on your behalf to buy it. Then we help you uh, find a tenant. There is a cost for us finding the tenant if you want us to do that service uh, mm -hmm. or you can find the tenant. And we'll give um, you the tips and strategies we'll on how, how to, to do, do it. it. So most of our clients yeah. find that that's yep. a lot of fun because they also want to have a conversation with that tenant. So it's kind of nice to have a little bit of hands-on. And we'll teach you how to get a credit check on those people, how to do the reference checks on those people, mm -hmm. and basically what things you should maintain in your property. So we walk alongside you mm -hmm. on this wealth building journey because we've mm -hmm. done it and we would have loved to have somebody oh, with our experience walk beside us. Oh, would have been so good. We made so many mistakes. And so what we can assure you is that all the mistakes we've made, you don't need to make and you won't make because we've now created an entire process and strategy around how to avoid all of those pitfalls and mistakes. Mm -hmm. All of them. Yes. So here's another opportunity. And this is one that actually our son Ryan did was he bought a property with 20% down. When he was 20? <clears throat> when he was 20, a little help from his parents. Uh, but he bought a house, put students in it. He, he lived in it as well while he was going to college. Yep. And then when it was time to move on, he held on to that mm -hmm. and then bought another property, but not taking money out of that house because he was able to buy with 5% down because it was another, it was his principal residence that he right. was going to move into. So he was able to save that money fairly quickly and buy another property. When even he got though, married and had kids, yeah. he decided he didn't want to live with all the students anymore. Exactly. Right. And, and the beauty is he didn't have to take equity or didn't have equity to take out of the house. But because he's buying a personal residence, he could buy it at a lower cost. So that's kind of neat too. Sometimes yeah. keeping the one you have without pulling equity out mm -hmm. and just buying another one with minimal down payment. Now, as a matter of fact, he did what one of the other doubling down strategies is, and that is you buy a duplex or triplex mm. and you live in one part of it. You can buy it for as little as 5% down, mm -hmm. rent out the other unit or two, mm -hmm. and pretty much it should cover your mortgage. Right. And you kind of live almost free. Almost. You might Kinda have to pay nice. a little bit of taxes and insurance, which you're going to have to pay anyways. But so you can almost live rent free with that strategy. So that's a great way. And that's what he did with his second home, bought a duplex, which he was able to convert to a triplex. Right. And very, very smart move on his behalf. I think he's a chip off the old block. Oh my goodness. I think it's this block, <laughs> not that block, right? Locks. You're giving me Maybe a chip off the blocks. Or can, yeah. blocks. Blocks? Okay. Yeah. We'll say that 
he <laughs> borrowed some strategy from both of us. Yes. And he did go to school for business and investment and finance. So he also did. And that was the best part. He's not going to love that I'm sharing this. And I think it's kind of fun. And he knows I share this. When he came to school or went to school, he came home and told us that we really didn't get any of it. We didn't understand. And then after a little more time, he realized we actually understood a whole lot. Yeah. And some of what he was being taught really wasn't as effective as he initially thought it was yes. when he saw it play out in the real world. Mm -hmm. So another method is to buy and improve the property mm -hmm. that you have and then move. Right. And now you might move to upgrade the house. You're, you're buying a more expensive house each time as you move up. Mm -hmm. Not a huge wealth building strategy, but it is an equity growth strategy. Right. So that you can build some equity to be in a bigger home or a more expensive home or a better area and then take some equity out of that later, which is what Candace and Sasha did, right? right? And, and then other clients of ours did something similar, Harold and Linda, which were just on a show that you absolutely want to watch because they were brilliant, amazing, and did just really smart. I mean, when we first met them, they were at the point of barely qualifying for the first mortgage that on the house that we were helping them buy. They'd come out of a totally different market and into the Ottawa market, which was a higher price market. And it was just a real challenge for them to get in. And then they also had some debt. So you add all that stuff together and it makes life tough. Within a few years, they were able to do some improvements on that house, buy another home that allowed them to do some improvements, some sweat equity, build enough equity that when they sold it, they could buy one to live in and one to invest. Mm -hmm. So they, it took a few years, and yet within a handful of years, they went from barely being able to get into a mortgage to having investment, and now they've got even more investment property and yeah. have moved again. So it, it's amazing how if you use the principles, it will actually give you the result yeah. that you're looking for. Yeah, so they actually, the, the first time they went to investment, they, mm -hmm. they sold and bought two, one to live in, one to rent. Yep. And then the next time they did it, they kept the one they were in, rented mm -hmm. it, and bought another one for themselves that met their needs better. Yeah. So now they're up to three properties. Yeah. They're, they're getting this doubling down, and it's only been... About what, 10 years. About 10 years? years? Yeah. yeah. So that sounds like a long time, 10 years. But oh. guess what? In 10 years, you're going to be the same age as you would be if you didn't do this or you did do this program. You're just going to have a whole lot more equity. Right. And you're building money for the future that you then don't have to work for. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool. Yep. We have another client, which uh, their show aired on uh, November 24th. Yep. And what they've done is they were able to sell their bigger home, mm -hmm. buy a smaller home so they could clean up their, their finances. And then they've bought several other investment properties that create cash flow. Mm -hmm. And then that cash flow is supporting their ministry work. Yeah, they're up to seven doors. Seven doors meaning seven families or seven individuals live in the home, in the different apartments within triplexes and that kind of thing that mm -hmm. they own. Duplexes so, and triplexes. Duplexes and triplexes. So that's pretty cool. From And that's really only been in about six years, if my memory's right. They went from really not, well, being significantly in debt. And I can say these things on air only because... They've been on air with us, shared their <laughs> stories, and want the reason they share it isn't because they really want you to know their business. In fact, many of our clients choose to keep their business very private and confidential, and yet these folks that we've been talking about feel a responsibility mm -hmm. to share the information with you and share their story with you so that you can learn from their story and duplicate it because they haven't really made any mistakes in it. They've just made really great decisions that have helped them build wealth without using any of any additional monies that they hadn't, you know, already learned or mm -hmm. earned through the process and then also with virtually no risk. It's strategic, it's intentional, it's deliberate and it's reprodu it's sustainable and it's duplicatable. Mm -hmm. And that's what they want you to know. So that's yeah. why we get to share their stories when yeah. they're not here with us. Yeah. Another one of our clients, Kevin, he bought a property mm -hmm. and it was a little rough shape, small yeah. property. And he significantly improved it 
with uh, some sweat equity and within six months was able to re-leverage, remortgage, mm -hmm. get a chunk of money out and go buy an investment property. So that's another strategy. Mm -hmm. Another strategy is to start out this way when you buy your first house. Right. Don't just buy a single, buy a duplex yep. or a triplex and you'll be able to buy it with as little as 5% down. I like investment properties that have more down, but when you're starting out... And if you're living in it, and you're you can, living in you it. You can get away you with You were probably five. going to start with five anyways for most people who are buying their first home. Um, so why not buy a multi-unit that helps put money in your pocket? Or you can buy a bungalow that's easily converted to have an apartment in the basement. We, we sell some of those from time to time where mm -hmm. people are looking for something that's got a side entrance or a back entrance to the basement so that they can create that in -law auxiliary type unit. Of, yeah, an auxiliary unit, mm -hmm. an in-law type apartment, and then can earn some pretty decent income. It doesn't necessarily increase the value of the property, and yet it increases how much is being paid down on your mortgage, and so therefore there's more people paying off the mortgage, mm -hmm. which is kind of cool. Yep. And we have clients that, uh, well, one that's presently looking for something uh, where they're going to sell their, their single residence and buy a multi-unit that they can live in one of the units. And that's just, uh, that's kind of a more moving towards a retirement strategy, mm -hmm. somewhere you wanna live like that. Now, when I say multi-units, for doubling down, we wanna stay with things four units or under. As soon as we get above five, five and above, it goes to commercial lending. It's a different different strategy. It works for many people. I've invested in that type of property as well, or a mixed use where there's commercial and residential. Mm -hmm. Just know that you want to make sure that your, your plan is in place before you start buying properties. Because oh, yes. how we buy them, how we finance them changes depending on your end game, what, you, what your goals are. Mm -hmm. And so that first consultation, that first free consultation is so valuable for, our, for you if this is something that you've been considering. Because you don't want to make any mistakes. <laughs> you just don't. Like, Well, why? you want to minimize them. Well, why sure. make any? Well, that's true. Why make any? Well, and, and the great news is because we've done it so many times and done it with so many people or helped so many people navigate this, the, the mistakes are pretty much used up. They're used up? They're used up. That's a great way of looking at it. Yeah. Yeah, there's no more stakes left. They got all used up. That's right. They're gone. <laughs> so if that if you're still feeling fearful, then start with a consultation. It's no obligation, which is the really cool part. And we're not actually here to convince you to do anything because it's really better that you're powerfully committed to this or you're not at all committed to it. A powerful yes or a powerful no. They're both amazing. And yet mm -hmm. sometimes what we have found with our clients that have not been initially excited about this journey that just by reading the, the wealth formula by Ken Decker, they started to get an understanding or a deeper understanding and hearing somebody's story, the couple, David and Sarah, in the book, their journey, just hearing it, connecting with it, connecting with the possibility. And then after that, attend a workshop. Then after that, gather a little more information, do some research, and then talk to somebody like the Decker team who have helped hundreds of clients accomplish really decent financial mm -hmm. goals, building wealth through a systematic approach that really is the mistakes have been used up mm -hmm. kind of gig, <laughs> right? I love it. Yeah. yeah. And if your New Year's resolution is to have mm -hmm. more wealth in the future or make different decisions with mm -hmm. your money in the future, if you're tired of paying month to month and worrying about what's mm. you know what your retirement or your future years are going to look like now i don't plan on retiring and the bible doesn't talk about people retiring uh, and yet it's it's a matter of fact in our culture people retire mm -hmm. and also you may come to a point where health wise you can't work and you need support and that costs money to have someone mm. support you in your life and it's, we're living longer and longer and longer. Which is so good. Which is awesome. Because I enjoy your company. So let's it's, hang out longer yeah. is what I'm thinking. And it costs more and more money. So my concern is mm. that people outlive their money. Mm. And with our plan, what we plan is that your money outlives you and, and works for generations to come in 
in your ministry, leaving a great legacy. Mm-hmm. So, that's happy stuff. That's happy stuff. So and if, it just takes a little bit of strategy. Yeah. Like it, it doesn't actually take more money. So no. we're not saying it's just how do you use yeah. the money? Right. How do you effectively? Yeah, you don't have to go out and get a part-time job no. on top of your full-time job to make no. some money. Most of the time, it's just, not that complicated. We got to reassign it. Yeah, it's actually we actually have an ebook. Forgot all about it, and here you go, Ottawa and area selling. Buying and investing made easy. And it really is easy if you just follow the basic core steps. And there are lots of programs out there that sound too good to be true. And guess what? They usually are. And they're really expensive. Yeah. I, I talk to oh. so many people, both in the US and in Canada, that have spent five and ten and twenty thousand dollars for mm. these buy real estate, no money down programs and how to buy real estate and we mentor you. And first thing they do is they teach them how to raise the credit limit on their credit card so that they can pay the bill and that messes up their credit rating so that they can't buy a property. So if you're, like I said, if your New Year's resolution is that you want to do things differently and you'd like to learn about this doubling down, then we've got 10 spots available in January. And so Email us, info at Decker Team, or call us, 613-860-4663, and we'll slot you in for a free consultation and see if our mentorship program is right for you for 2018. Because right. we've built wealth, and we want to share the wealth. Well, and we have been. So there's already a proven track record and we want to make sure you get the benefit and the advantage of that. So enjoy New Year's, have fun time celebrating in a couple of days, enjoy New Year's Eve, and then January 1st, get on the phone. Not the first, we're off. I know. The second. But you know what I mean. You get on the phone January 2nd. Have a great day. <laughs>